This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. The one and only Alyssa Orange from Pig Trail Nation on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. Good afternoon, Alyssa. How are you? Hey, guys. Good to be with you. I'm good. Uh, you uh, got, got to be looking forward to Coach Pittman speaking with the media today. Uh, what would be, uh, what do you want to know today? What would be your first question, given the chance to ask one, which I'm assuming you will? <laughs> Only after Bob Holt, but yes. I, <laughs> I really want to know uh, about the tight ends. I am so curious about how Dan Enos is going to kind of re-erect this tight end room. Um, and if you look at the numbers under Kendall Bryles, he just didn't use them a lot in his offense compared to what Dan Enos did the first time around when you go back and look at some of the statistics. And obviously he had guys like Hunter Henry and Jeremy Sprinkle at his disposal. But can you and do you have the talent in that tight end room now to make it utilized a little bit more? So that's really what I want to know. And then I'm really looking just at the defense and what this defense is going to look like. They talked about how aggressive Travis Williams is during SEC media days, but you can't be overly aggressive. And so where is that balance? I do wonder, like, um, you know, last year defensively they were they were good at pressuring the quarterback, and, and that's about it. Made some splash plays, maybe forced a few turnovers early in the season, but that started to disappear a little bit. Um I mean, you got to ask about tackling. Can this, is this is this a team that's going to be better tackling? And how exactly do you go about being a better tackling team right now? Absolutely. Well, and I think Sam Pittman kind of talked about it a little. I maybe even touched on it. Talk about it might be a little too much, but you know, he was so um, focused on thudding and not tackling at practice because of injuries, and I understand that. But he even said, like, I've had to learn, we got to tackle in practice, and it has to happen. Um, and so I think just that change in general should be a change that we see on the field during the game day or during game days if, we, if, they, if they do it correctly. Alyssa, I know you're a Dalvin Cook fan. I, I think Dalvin Cook's a top seven running back in the in the NFL, and I heard that he might be. There's a chance those Miami Dolphins might be on him. They still they're trying, man. I tell you what, it is. I don't know if I've ever had a guy from my alma mater on the Dolphins since I've graduated, and then they got Jalen Ramsey, and Jalen Ramsey got hurt at practice and in training camp. And so I've been watching this. And then he goes to the Jets, which just, you know, yanks mm -hmm. your heart out to make visits. And so I'm really curious, too, because, you know, Mike McDaniel's so weird about that stuff. It'll, like, it's there, and then they it's, they don't talk about it for a while. And it's like, is he just trying to pull strings behind the scenes? And then all of a sudden, you know, boom, Dalvin Cook is a Miami Dolph. I have no idea, but I've still got my hopes up. After listening to Musselman yesterday, I, I'm pretty excited about this basketball team and, and how he just totally flipped the script on this age difference. Mm -hmm. Do you think this basketball team is a, is a team that actually could compete for a regular season championship this year? Yeah, I think they've got that potential. And, you know, a lot of coaches don't like to compare their teams. I go back to Dave Van Horn does not like to compare team to team because it's always so different. But Musselman made it pretty clear this is a very different team from last year. Practices are easier. I'm not as frustrated as I was with teaching and, and having to go over things time and time again uh, because of the experience that he did bring in. And so I think that's really telling that they are further along just with the, the installation of their offense and what they want to do defensively than they were at this point last year. And that is very telling. Now, he also said who we are right now in November is not who we want to be in March. I think every coach says that. But once again, this is a team that's got that potential. It all really hinges on how they gel as a team during the regular season. Is there, have you ever heard from, from folk, you know, you hear a little bit about Dave Van Horn because you have this body of, of, of work right in front of you, and, and, and it's like, well, he's never won the national title, and it really just kind of mm -hmm. follows him, even even amongst the fan base, those who who appreciate this incredible success for baseball, yeah. right. you know, they'll throw that out there, of course. Um, yeah. Do you, do you get any sense of that about Must yet at Arkansas? It's only three years, 
but it's there's that threshold that you are hoping to, and I think some folks are expecting to cross. For baseball, it's to win a national title. For the men's basketball team, it's to get back to the Final Four. I don't think you're there yet where it's like, yeah, either Final Four or bust. I don't think you're there yet. But do you ever have a sense that some people are viewing it that way? I think they have, but I, and I think that they have since Musselman made it to the Elite Eight in his second year. I think that expectation has always been, you look at the recruiting, you look at what his track record just in Arkansas, and it's, okay, well, you've got to take it a step further. And in the off season, the expectation is to bring in those players who will take you a step further. So I think that conversation and that expectation has been around for at least two years now. Um, and, and the one thing about Mus is no one out prepares him. No one is going to have a bigger feeling for his teams than him. And so he, he goes into those season, I think, having those expectations because I think he wants to win it maybe more than some of the fans want him to win it. So um, he, he kind of thrives under that kind of pressure. I feel like there's a certain kind of of a veteran basketball player that that must likes to bring in and, and when you look throughout the 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 time he's been the Razorback co- head coach you see players that are coming in from and this might not be the proper way to put it in terms of like Houston where you bring in Tremont Mark that's not a lower level program they just were playing in a league that wasn't the SEC but that's mostly where these players have come from. You know, think of a Stanley Amude from, from South Dakota. Uh, you know, you get a number of players that are they were just like that. Even Jimmy Witt, you know, coming back from Southern Methodist to show what he can do once again in the SEC. There's a hunger aspect that goes with that. It's different than bringing in somebody that played in the ACC or played in the Big 12. You know, they feel <laughs> they've already played on that big, big stage. Um, but I, I, I like that. That's one thing that stands out about this. Yeah, I mean, I like the AAC. It's good basketball, but most of these players that have transferred in this year, well, they're kind of stepping up as far as the level of competition they face on a day-in, day-out basis. There's a yeah. hunger aspect to that. Yeah, and, you know, you look at J.D. Uh, or J, J.D. Note coming in, you know, from, from Jacksonville, and, and I think at the end of the day, when you are executing that kind of talent, and I, I think I followed what you're kind of asking, Phil, is, you know, basketball, talent is talent regardless of where you're playing. And we see it a lot in basketball and even in baseball that maybe the recruiting process or certain things just didn't play out coming out of high school. But Dave Van Horn has been all, so good at evaluating talent and the feeling and a guy who he can bring in regardless of where he has played and make him an SEC baseball player. And I think Eric Musselman does the same thing on the basketball court is it's not about where you came from, but what can I tap into that I see in you to make you an SEC basketball player. And it's why we've seen the growth in these guys who have come from those more mid mid major schools and have such good production at Arkansas. It, it, it really is amazing how Coach Muss hasn't missed. I mean, he he's kind of hit a lot of them. I hope Coach Pittman hits hits a lot of them on this transfer portal. It's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. Yeah, absolutely. And and I I was on a Twitter um, uh, space yesterday, and someone asked me and the panel, you know, who do you think is going to be the best transfer? And we haven't seen any of these guys, but my answer was like, this might not be what you're looking for, but the answer is Jacoby Criswell. How important having a backup quarterback like Jacoby Criswell coming in from North Carolina, and he's an Arkansas kid, related to, to Dre Greenlaw, so he's very familiar with the Razorbacks. Having a guy that can alleviate some of the trepidation of KJ's all we have. And, and let's be honest, they just didn't have a backup, and they haven't for a really long time since KJ's been the starter. Um the best backup they had was KJ when he was backing up Felipe Frank. So having a backup quarterback like Jacoby Crystal might be the biggest pickup from the transfer portal that Arkansas has had this offseason on the football field. Well, we'll certainly we'll, we'll feel an answer about that if, and hopefully it doesn't happen, but if KJ suffers an injury at some point this season. Hey, Alyssa, last thing, deadline. Thought the Dodgers had themselves Eduardo Rodriguez, but the Tigers lefty said, nope. I don't want to play for the Dodgers. I'd rather languish in last place and be closer to my family. But 
that's one aspect that we don't think about when it comes mm-hmm. to you know why somebody would invoke a no trade clause. You think, well, you're a competitor. You want to go have a chance to play with the best, and the Dodgers always are amongst the best. Rodriguez, I guess, wanted to be closer to family, so it was a bit of a swing and miss for the Dodgers, and they came out really surprised by that. I, I, yeah, I think so, because when is the last time that that happened? But you have to tip your cap for him, really looking uh, into himself and, and doing what he needs to do so there's no hard feelings. And you had Lance Flynn on the uh, mound yesterday getting the win, so uh, maybe this bullpen is, is turning things around. We'll see. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.